Impulse is one of those concepts in physics that is easy to just memorize formulas for, but difficult to gain a deep understanding. But don't worry, by the end of today, you will gain an intuition for impulse and be able to use it just like how you already used the concepts of force and momentum. First, let's do a quick recap of force and momentum by having my friend throw a basketball at me. A small one, for safety reasons. The simple, intuitive definition of force is it's a push or pull. In this case, my friend is exerting a force from his hand onto the basketball, therefore accelerating it. Momentum is essentially how much punch an object has. If the object is massive or moving extremely fast, like this basketball, it has a lot of momentum. Ouch. Sometimes, forces change over short periods of time, such as the collision between a golf ball and an anvil. But having all these different values is complicated. Generally, we only care about what's happening before and after the collision. For example, the incoming and the outgoing velocity of the golf ball. We usually don't care about the down to the millisecond details of the forces in between. It would be much better to just get a single value. Hmm. Like how much the momentum changes from before and after the collision. That's an intuitive and simple way to describe collisions because it tells you how impactful the collision is with only one number. Think about it. Let's say there was a car crash. The two cars move with extremely high momentum. And when they collide, both cars come to a complete stop within a split second, reducing their momentum to zero. There is a high change of momentum, therefore a huge impact. What we just discussed was impulse, the change in momentum. You just use impulse intuitively without even knowing it. Now, impulse is also force multiplied by time. Looking at the formulas, it makes sense. The more force you apply to an object and the longer you apply it for, the more momentum changes. If you don't believe me, let's test it with an experiment. Here we have a Lego bow and a Lego dart. First, I'm going to exert a force on the Lego dart for 100 milliseconds. Then I'm going to do the same experiment, but cut the amount of time down to only 50 milliseconds. As expected, the more time I exert the force for, the higher the impulse or change in momentum. Therefore, the dart exits with a much higher velocity. To recap, impulse is a change in momentum and it's an extremely useful way to describe how impactful a collision is. There's a lot more to this concept, such as how the area under a force over time graph is the impulse, but we don't have time for that today. What I'll leave you with though is a physics pun. The next time your friend gets mad and punches a wall, you can truly say, man, that was impulsive.